What's up, Dragon Brood? Today we found out that this whole foundation set ain't playing around. There's a lot of exciting stuff coming, so we're going to try to go pretty quickly because there was a lot of cards previewed, and it looks like we got nearly all the cards for the uh, jumpstart as well, so we're going to try to cover all that in this video, so let's get to it. All right, starting with Zatalpa, this is probably like the most reprinted dinosaur, rare, or mythic, I think. It's been in a ton of commander decks or whatever, but hey, it's back here as well. Wishclaw Talisman is kind of a weird inclusion, a colorless and a black, get three wishes, pay one or move one, you can search for a card, pass it to your opponent. Like, I think it showed up in one pseudo combo deck when it was standard legal, so I don't expect this to get a lot of play, but you never know, since we have some stuff like Demonic Pact and things around, so we'll see. Will Leaf Leash I'm a fan of, actually, especially right now with all the discard decks, being able to have this card, which by the way, if you don't know what it is, colorless and three uh, slicing your mana, so... Green, white, green, white, green, white. So four mana for a four, four. Your green creatures get plus one, plus one. Your white creatures get plus one, plus one. But if your opponent controls something that makes you discard this, then it just comes into play. I also like this as an addition for some of the elf decks because generally all the elves you're going to play have some amount of green or white. And if they're both, they get double bonus, which is really cool. So lots of cool stuff going on with this card that could make it standard playable. Wildborn Preserver is kind of neat. Uh, it is an elf, so if you're looking for a two mana thing in your elf deck and somewhere to pump all that extra mana, that's actually pretty cool. But I'm not sure where else this fits. It does have flash, so maybe that's a thing. But it didn't get a ton of play with him in its standard last time, though elves weren't as big at that time. So it's going to be kind of hard to tell, but I wouldn't expect this to go crazy. Voracious Great Shark. Three colorless, blue, blue, five, four, flash. When this creature enters, counter target, artifact, or creature spell. This actually got played a bit in standard. For those of you who don't know, it was actually pretty reasonable. It is an expensive card, but it is basically a counter that doubles as a five, four creature. I don't think we'll see a lot of it, and I don't think it'll be expensive. You should be able to get these for under a dollar probably the whole time it's in standard. But it is a card you do have to occasionally look out for. Vizier of the Menagerie. Three colorless and a green for a 3-4. You can look at the top card of your library at any time. You can cast creature spells from the top of your library. You can spend mana of any type to cast creature spells. This is just a fun and interesting card. It kind of got a little bit of play in Commander. Not so much in Standard, but there probably could be a home for a card like this. But again, I wouldn't expect it to be more than probably 3 to $5, mostly because it's going to be more of a Commander card that gets a decent reprint. Unflinching Courage. Colorless, green, white, aura, and giant creature. The creature gets plus two, plus two, and has trample and lifelink. I bring this up because there's already a fair amount of decks right now that want to play auras, some that are even in Selesnya colors, or green, white, something. This is actually really good, and I could see those decks playing this. Having another creature that lifelinks, also having something that tramples after you've built it up and put a bunch of the extra counters on it. So I would expect this to get some amount of play. And over the history of time, like this card and others like it tend to see a reasonable amount of play tempest gin is getting reprint blue 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 for a z zero four flying but this creature gets plus one plus zero for each basic island you control there's already like the Eluge decks that want you to have more islands to be able to do things and this fits perfectly into that so i would not be surprised if this helps round out that deck and it becomes more of a thing Torian Mauler, two colors and a red for a two two it's changing whenever an opponent casts a spell you put a counter on this creature this is an interesting card because it is a shapeshifter, so it counts as all different types. And this card kind of always been about $2, and I'm not totally sure why. I would assume it's a commander thing, but I don't even see it that much in commander. But I guess it's still going to be another $2 reprint, which is cool. I guess if you found something where you needed extra creature types to matter in red, this could be pretty good. But yeah, I don't know. Just an interesting inclusion. Surak the Hunt Caller. Two colorless green green. 5-4, human warrior. At the beginning of combat on your turn... If creatures you control have a total power of 8 or greater, target creatures you control gains haste until end of turn. This is just kind of a neat inclusion if you're going like mid-size or large, mono green or gruel aggro, something like that. So the next thing you play just gets haste. Nothing too flashy, it's just a solid creature. Stromkirk, Stromkirk Noble, it's a 1 red for a 1-1. One, one. It can't be blocked by humans. Whenever this creature deals combat damage to a player, put a plus one, plus one counter on it. This would be a cool card to have around for, say, the whole five years that this is standard legal, because this actually does fit the mono red or Rakdos aggro kind of scheme, and not being able to be blocked by humans is a real thing, depending on what the metagame looks like at any given point, and this card did get played when it was standard legal previously. Still Hellkite, six colors mana for a 5-5 five, five flyer. 
pay two, it gets plus one, plus zero. You can pay X, destroy each non-land permanent with mana value X, whose controller was dealt combat damage by this creature this turn. Activate only once each turn. So this is actually an okay card. It reads way better than it plays, but it's been around before in Standard and we didn't play a lot of it then. It's a very precise card, if you want to call it that. So it's neat to have it around if you have a way to ramp into it, make artifacts discounted maybe you're playing a dragon deck you sideboard it but it's not the most exciting thing looks like we have multiple sphinxes in this set so sphinx of the final word five colorless blue blue five five can't be countered has flying has hex proof instant sorcery spells you control can't be countered this is really good in opposing creature battles or control battles i should say so your spells can't really be interfered with which is kind of nice but seven mana is a lot to invest in this card. But you're getting a lot, right? Can't be countered, has flying, has hexproof, and your other spells can't be countered. So there's probably a sideboard situation for this in best of three. Probably won't see a lot of it in best of one. River's Rebuke, four colorless, blue, blue. Return all non-land permanents, target player, controls to their owner's hand. Yeah, this one's really good really good you're gonna see this get some play i don't think it got played much last go around in standard when it was legal which was uh, what is that five years ago or something now but i think it can have a chance like just returning everything while you have a board and just being able to overrun your opponent in a couple turns is pretty big business red of replication two colorless blue blue kicker five create a token that's a copy of target creature if that spell was kicked create five of those tokens instead this is just an interesting card. I mean, it doesn't get a ton of play, but usually if somebody finds a way to ramp it, uh, ramp into it, you know, get extra mana, make it cheaper, you can do some silly things with it. So not bad that it's around. It'll at least leave room for some creative deck building. This card just amuses me. Release the dogs. Three colors and a white. <laughs> Great for 1-1 one, one white dog creature tokens. Kind of awesome if you have an ETB for tokens or you already have something out like... I don't know, doubling season, so you get eight dogs. <laughs> yeah, I don't know. This will probably show up somewhere. Regal Caracol is back. Three colorless, white, white, three, three. Other cats you control gets plus one, plus one, have lifelink. When this creature enters, create two white cat creature tokens with lifelink. Yeah, nothing too crazy here. This is a card that's kind of been a dollar, kind of its entire lifespan, and it'll be standard legal for five years. There are going to be a lot of cats, so it's possible this could actually get some extra play and giving your cats... Lifelink is actually pretty cool, so I wouldn't be surprised if the cat decks play like two or three of these in their list. Rampaging Balos. Four colorless, green, green for a 6-6 six, six trampling beast. Landfall. Whenever a land enters, you gain a 4-4 four, four green beast creature token. Yeah, this card's just solid. It's expensive, but honestly, if you're not wanting to overcommit to the board, you're just playing lands making 4-4s, four this becomes something your opponent has to deal with. Don't expect to see a lot of play, though. It never really did. It's just corner case. Is devastating when it hits, but it's a fine card, nothing exciting. Ramos Dragon Engine. I think this was only previously in Commander Legends or something. But anyway, uh, it's a six mana, four, four, legendary artifact dragon. Has flying. When you cast a spell, put a plus one, plus one counter on Ramos for each of that spell's colors. Remove five plus one, plus one counters. Add two of each color mana. Activate only once each turn. This card... <sighs> It has some uses. I just don't know if it's going to get played in standard that much. Now, you could play it as a piece to the Nib Mizzet deck that wants you to have a bunch of multicolor spells, and that kind of makes sense. But that's probably the only use for it off the top of my head. But I'm sure somebody will figure out something to do with this. Primeval Bounty, five colorless and a green is an enchantment. Whenever you cast a creature spell, get a three three. Whenever you cast a non creature spell, put three plus one plus one counters on target creature you control. And then whenever you play a land, you gain three life. This card actually turns out to just be generally useful. No matter what you're doing, you're getting something, right? You're either getting a creature, counters on a creature, or three life. It's just solid. Like, nothing more to say about it. Card's been around. It doesn't have a crazy amount of value because it doesn't show up in a ton of decks. But if you've been looking to get a hold of one, eh, it's a decent, decent reprint. I just don't know if it has a space in standard, but I'm not upset it's around. Prime Speaker Zagana. Two colorless, two green, two blue. It's a 1-1 one, one Merfolk. Enters with X plus one plus one counters on it, where X is the greatest power among other creatures you control. Then, when this enters, draw cards equal to its power. So, just kind of a useful card. Happens to be a merfolk wizard, so it could fit those creature types. But this card's been reprinted before. Didn't make too big of a splash then. Probably won't now. Primal Might. 
It's an X and a green. Target creature gets XX until end of turn. Then it fights up to one target creature you don't control. This was a really fun card to have around in standard because it's a flexible fight spell while also being just a creature pump spell on something that's like with trample or whatever. So this could get some play. I wouldn't expect to see a lot of it, but wouldn't be surprised if it pops up. Predator Ooze. Green, green, green. For a 1-1, one, one, it has indestructible whenever this creature attacks. Put a plus one, plus one counter on it. Whenever a creature dealt damage by this card dies, put a plus one, plus one counter on this creature. It's just a quality ooze. I mean, they're trying to keep oozes relevant. We've already seen a couple in these previews so far. Not a big surprise. It's just an okay card. I don't know if oozes will be a real thing. Oftentimes, a card like this just shows up in another list because of the counters for some reason or whatever. Ovika, Enigma Goliath, 5 colorless, blue red, 6-6, six, six, flying, legendary Phyrexian Nightmare. The ward of 3 colorless and pay 3 life. Whenever you cast a non-creature spell, create an X-1-1 one, one red Phyrexian Goblin creature token, where X is the mana value of that spell. They gain haste until end of turn. Like, this card has actually been around and just didn't get a lot of play. I think it's the cost. Like, 7 is so much, but you do get a lot with this, right? It's a hard card to kill because you have to pay extra mana and life, and then your non-creature spells just start stacking up a bunch of tokens with haste. So could it still get some play? Mm, possibly, especially with all the reanimator spells we have. But I wouldn't expect to see this do a ton. No Priest of Oblivion, welcome back. Hit Colas and a black, 2-1, kicker of four. It has lifelink, it has menace. And if you paid the kicker, you return a creature from your graveyard to the battlefield. Just a solid another reanimator card. Myogen of nice Knight's Reach is a little interesting reprint because these haven't been around since Champions of Kamigawa. But this is 5 colorless, black, 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 so 8 mana for 5-2. It enters with the counter on it. Uh, it has indestructible as long as it has the divinity counter. But you can remove the divinity counter from it. Each opponent discards their hand. Not sure where this gets played, but it's kind of a slightly pricey reprint. So if you've been needing one, the price will come down on them. Midnight Reaper, 2 colors and a black for a 3-2 zombie knight. Whenever a non-token creature you control dies, this creature deals 1 damage to you and you draw a card. Yeah, this got played last time around in Standard. I expect it probably will here too. Likely though, going to be mostly our like, do zombies or knights really have a deck that's a thing? If so, it probably gets more play. Have a token deck that's making 1-1s? One -ones? Mentor of the Meek might be your card. Two colors and a white for a 2-2 human soldier. Whenever one of those things with power two or less enters the battlefield, you can pay one if you do draw a card. And it's not once per turn. Maze of Mind Tome, two colors. Tap, put a page counter on this and scry. Pay two and tap it. Put a page counter on this. Draw a card. When there are four or more page counters on it, exile it. If you do, you gain four life. This was actually played in standard. It's not like the craziest, flashiest card. It's just all around good utility. So I'd expect control decks to at least consider playing this still. Massacre Worm. Three colorless. Black, black, black. Six, five. When this creature enters, creatures your opponent's control get minus two, minus two, tone of turn. Whenever a creature an opponent controls dies, that player loses two life. Yeah, this card's been solid each time it's been in standard. I expect it will still have a home here. Not that you're going to see a ton of it, but it's definitely going to be playable, especially if there are token or small toughness creatures that are anywhere dominant in the format. Linden, the Steadfast Queen, white, 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 3-3, three, three, Vigilance. Whenever a white creature you control attacks, you gain a life. Yeah, if you're doing life gain, life gain angels, anything like that, this card's going to be a staple. It got played before, it'll get played again. Now, Lathless is a dragon. Six mana, six six flying. Whenever another non-token dragon you control enters, create a five five red dragon creature token with flying. Pay a red and a colorless dragons you control get plus one plus zero. Not herself, all your dragons. So if you are trying to build a dragon deck, this is a good upper end. Otherwise, probably not going to see a ton of play. Also, since we're back into kind of color hosers, Knight of Malice is back. Two mana, two two human knight first strike hexproof from white. And it gets plus one plus zero if your opponent controls a white permanent. And the opposite of that, Knight of Grace, two mana, two, two, human knight, first strike, hexproof from black. It gets a plus one plus zero if a player controls a black permanent. Also, I said opponent previously. It's just if a, any player controls a permanent of the opposite color. So something to note. Colostria Highborn, black, black, two, two, vampire shaman. Whenever this creature or another vampire you control dies, you may pay two if you do. Target player loses two and you gain two. 
this seems like it should be really good, but I don't remember us playing a lot with this when it was last reprinted, but I don't even remember what it was last in. Maybe, like, it's been a while. Somewhere around years ago. Anyway, this card probably could get played in Standard. I just don't know how popular Vampires are going to be, though we have seen a couple in this preview season, and there are still some that are already in Standard. And we could get some over the next, geez, five years. That's a long time for there not to be some Vampires. So this will probably be one of those cards that enters and leaves the metagame fairly regularly. More Elf action. Imperius Perfect. Two colors and a green. Two, two. Other Elves get a bonus. Plus one, plus one. You can pay one, tap it, and make an Elf Warrior token. I like this because you don't have to overcommit to the board. Just, alright, I'm just going to make another 1-1, one, one, which is really a 2-2. Two, two. It's likely going to be a 3-3 three, three or bigger because of other things going on. So, yeah, Elves are looking like they could be a real legit deck after Foundations releases. Immersor and Predator, two colorless, black red, three three, flying, vampire dragon, another vampire. Whenever this creature becomes tapped, exile up to one target card from a graveyard and put a plus one plus one counter on this. You can sacrifice another creature. This creature gains indestructible until end of turn and tap it. Yeah, this is solid. It's a card that's hard to get rid of with some of the board sweepers. It has flying, it can get bigger, and we did play with it previously in standard, so there's probably a spot for it, especially with the Racto Sacrifice decks that already exist. They don't really have a big flying or, you know, evasive upper end card, and this probably fits that. I don't know if they're trying to make Hydras happen in standard, but here's another Hydra. Hero's Bane, three colorless, green, green. Enters with four plus one plus ones. You can pay two green, green, put X plus one plus one counters on it, where that's this card's power. So basically just double the power each time. But maybe. Sad part is, this is one of the ones that doesn't have trample, so it really doesn't matter if you make it a 12-12 or 16-16, or whatever, unless you're planning on flinging it or something. Eh, not that exciting, really. Harbinger of Tides, blue-blue, 2-2, two, two, Merfolk Wizard. You can cast this card as though it had Flash if you pay two more to cast it, so you can make it cost four. And then, when this creature enters, you may return target tapped creature and opponent controls to its owner's hand. So, just a useful card to bounce something back to your opponent's hand, giving you a little bit of flexibility to control the board. Otherwise, it is just kind of a 2-2. No clue if it's going to be a thing. Merfolk isn't really a thing right now, but it is at least a useful card. Kind of tough that it's a rare, though. Gratuitous Violence. This hasn't only been reprinted in Commander sets in the last, like, five years, I think. But two colorless, red, 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 enchantment. If a creature you control would deal damage to a permanent or a player, it deals double that damage instead. Not sure if this ends up becoming a standard card of any kind, but... It actually is just pretty cool. I could see some like mid rangey gruel rampy thing that would play something like this. So you connect with something with trample and just does a bunch of damage. But otherwise, I don't think it has too big of a home. Kind of just a nice quality commander reprint, I think. Fumigate, three colors, white, white, destroy all creatures. You gain a life for each creature destroyed this way. I mean, I guess. We already have tons of sweepers and we keep putting at least one or two new ones, more than two new ones in many cases, in every set. So. Eh, hard to be excited about sweeper reprints. We have plenty. Finale of Revelation. X blue blue. Draw X cards. If X is 10 or more, instead shuffle your graveyard into your library. Draw X cards. Untap up to 5 lands and you have no maximum hand size for the rest of the game. This is just a neat card. It's a sorcery, obviously, so, you know, you gotta commit on your turn. But just a good card, honestly, even if you're just getting, like, three or four cards off of it. I wouldn't expect it to see a lot of play, though, because we do have a lot of ways to draw cards pretty efficiently right now, while not having to commit mad on your turn. So just a neat inclusion, but probably won't get a ton of play. Felidar Retreat, quality reprint, three colorless and a white. It's an enchantment, has landfall. You can either make a 2-2 or put a plus one, plus one counter on all your creatures. There's a lot of plus one, plus one variant decks that are probably going to want something like this, but it also could go into the cat deck, so probably will expect to see a decent bit of this card. Drog Skull Reaver, five colorless, white blue, three fives, flying spirit, it has double strike, lifelink, whenever you gain life, draw a card. This card was actually somewhat of like a finisher spell for Azorius control decks back when it was standard legal. Don't know if that will still be the case, but it is a solid card that's hard to deal with. Hey, Dragon Magger, Dragon Magger, Dragon Master Outcast. It's a red for a 1-1 one, one human shaman. At the beginning of your upkeep, if you control six or more lands, create a 5-5 five, five red dragon creature token with flying. Yeah, I love cards like this where you don't have to overcommit to the board. It's just making extra bodies. It's just an okay early 1-1, one, one, but has a huge upside that your opponent has to deal with. You know, you can't just let it sit there. 
So yeah, I'm I'm a fan of this card. Cool reprint. Dictator Crufix, colorless blue blue, enchantment, flash at the beginning of each player's draw step, that player draws an additional card. Yeah, kind of just is what it is. We've seen this around for a bit. It's been like a $2 card. Not sure where it lives, but hey, it's going to be standard legal now. Desecration Demon. Two colorless, black, black, 6-6, six, six, flying. At the beginning of each combat, any opponent may sacrifice a creature of their choice. If a player does, tap this creature and put a plus one, plus one counter on it. So yeah, if you really want to go hard on the demon deck, like this is an efficient demon. Granted, your opponent can keep you from doing stuff with it by sacrificing a creature, but maybe that's still worth it. I don't know. I will say this card didn't get a ton of play previously in standard. It had like a few pockets here or there. So probably won't see a lot of it unless somebody just wants to play really on theme demons. Crawling Barons. Tap to add a colorless, or you can pay four, put two plus one plus one counters on it. If you do, it becomes a zero zero elemental creature till end of turn and still land. This actually was a really played land when it was in standard. Just because you could wait, build it up, you know, during your opponent's end step, spend four mana, and eventually have like this 8-8 eight, eight, or 10-10 ten, ten that you're attacking with. So, could still be a thing, maybe. I mean, we have so many different types of creature lands. Maybe not right now, but there is a world where this could actually be a thing probably down the road. It's going to be standard legal for five years. Hey, Charming Prince, you want to play the Flicker, Bounce, whatever deck? Call us in a white for a 2-2. When it enters, choose one. Scry two, gain three life, or exile another target creature you own. Return it to the battlefield under your control at the beginning of your next end step. Just a good, useful little card. Can do a bunch of different things depending on the type of deck you need it for. Boros Charm, key reprint. Red, white, choose one. It deals four to target creature, or actually to target player or planeswalker. Permanence you control gain indestructible, which is huge in a lot of matchups. Target creature gains double strike to end of turn, also huge. Expect this card to show up in a lot of places. Basilisk Collar, one colorless, artifact, equipment. Equip creature has death touch and lifelink, equip for two. Yeah, this card's been good, it'll continue to be good. Also works with anything that pings a creature, so like you tap, deal damage to a thing, you'll still kill it because it has death touch. Lifelink on your biggest thing is always good. Like, there's a lot going on with this card. Cheap to cast, cheap to equip. Virtually the perfect type of equipment you want. Okay, there were way more here that got previewed for the jumpstart stuff than I was considering. So, strap yourselves in. We're going to probably have to speed things up a little bit so this video doesn't take too long. Galta, Primal Hunger, 12 mana, 10 green green for a 12-12. This spell costs X less to cast, where X is the total power of creature you control. It has trample. Nothing too flashy. Cool that it's a reprint. Zealous Conscripts, four colors and a red, three, three, has haste. When it enters, gain control of target permanent. Until in the turn, untap that permanent, gains haste on the turn. Eh, probably nothing we're super excited about, but it's kind of fitting for jumpstart. Zada, Hedron Grinder, three colors and a red for a three, three, goblin ally. Whenever you cast an instant or sorcery spell that targets only Zada, copy that spell for each other creature you control, that spell could target. Each copy targets a different one of those creatures. It's fine. It's not really a valuable reprint. It's just a cute card. Young Pyromancer, 2 mana, 2-1 two, Human Shaman. Whenever you cast an instant torture spell, make a 1-1 one, one red elemental token. Just a useful card. Shows up in a variety of decks from time to time. Wind Reader Sphinx, 5 colors, blue, blue, 3-7, flying. Whenever a creature you control flying attacks, you can draw a card. Eh. If you open this in the actual like jumpstart game where you're playing against somebody, it's probably backbreaking, but probably won't be played in any real deck you build. Voice of the Woods. This is a 2-2 two -two for 5 mana. Tap 5 untap elves you control and create a 7-7 seven -seven green elemental creature token with trample. I don't mind this, right? If you have something that's making a bunch of elf tokens or whatever, end of turn, you make a 7-7 seven because -seven you don't have to do this as a sorcery. Like, this is cool. It's a playable card. Nothing too wild. Will it make your deck most of the time? Not really. Maybe in Commander. You know, if you just want something to do with some creatures, but otherwise, probably not. Vito, Thorn of the Dusk Rose, two colors and a black. For a 1-3, whenever you gain life, target opponent loses that much life. Pay five, creature you control, gain lifelink. Yeah, this card's playable and good. People have always wanted to play this. I think it's usually like a $5 card, so solid reprint to have available. Vincer, Shaper Savant, two colors, blue blue, two two, human wizard, flash. When it enters, return target spell a permanent to its owner's hand. It's like a pseudo counter spell when you need it to be, or just bounce a problematic card. So just solid. Venerated Loxodon, five or well five mana, 
four four. It's an elephant cleric. It's convoke, and whenever it enters, put a plus one plus one counter on each creature that convoked it. So if you are doing the plus one plus one counters thing, this is a fine inclusion. Valkyrie Harbinger, four colorless, white white for four five angel cleric, flying lifelink. At the beginning of each upkeep, or at the beginning of each end step, sorry, if you gain four or more life this turn, create a 4-4 white angel creature token with flying and vigilance. This obviously goes good with the other angel we have right now, like the 3-3 three, three, that if at the end of turn, if you gain five life, you make a creature. So you can do all kinds of stuff with these in conjunction. So yeah, this could be the upper end of an angel deck with one or two copies. Just seems reasonable. Undergrowth champion, colorless, green, green, for a 2 2 if damage would be dealt to it. While it has a plus one plus one counter on it, you prevent that damage and remove a counter. Landfall, you put a counter on it. This card has always been underwhelming, so not a super exciting reprint for any real purpose. Tyvar Kel, two colorless, green green, elves you control, have tap, add a black. You can plus one, put a plus one plus one counter on a creature, untap it, or onto one target elf, untap it, it gains death touch. You can pay zero, make a one one elf warrior, and you can minus six. You get an emblem. Whenever you cast an elf spell, it gains haste until end of turn and you draw two cards. Starts with three loyalty. This card's playable. If you're doing elves, why not include one in your deck? Otherwise, it's not really doing a lot. Not the flashiest of Planeswalkers. Topiary Stomper. Decent inclusion. Colorless green, green, 4-4. Four, four. Vigilance. Search your library for a basic. Can't attack or block unless you have seven or more lands. Kind of good if you're doing the landfall thing or just want to ramp your deck up. Tireless Tracker, cool reprint. Two colors and a green for a 3 2. Human Scout, landfall. Whenever land enters, you investigate. And whenever you sacrifice a clue, put a plus one plus one counter on Tireless Tracker. Yeah, this has been, I don't know, a couple of different reprints and some stuff. So it's not like it's an expensive card. It's just a fun, useful card if you are doing landfall stuff already. Thrix, the Sudden Storm, three colors, blue, blue, four, five. Flash Flying, spells you cast with mana value five or greater, cost one less to cast and can't be countered. It's an elemental giant. I don't know how I feel about this card. Like, even when it was in standard, we didn't play it much. Even when we tried to force giants to be a thing, eh, that's kind of how I feel about it. Thought Monitor, six colorless and a blue for a 2-2 affinity for artifacts flying. When it enters, draw two cards. Yeah, another one that's just kind of like, eh, I guess. Thieves Guild Enforcer, one black, one one flash. Whenever this or another rogue you control enters, opponent mills two cards. As long as opponent has eight or more cards in the graveyard, this has plus two, plus one, and has death touch. Yeah, if you're doing either rogues or melling, this card has a home. And it was actually solid while it was in standard, though it won't be standard legal, being in uh, Jumpstart. But it's just fine. It's a quality reprint. It'll probably be like a buck. Nothing to write home about, just useful. Well, I forgot about this card. Stonehaven Outfitter. Colorless and a white for a 2-2 two -two core artifice or ally. Equipped creatures... Get plus one, plus one. Whenever an equipped creature you control dies, you draw a card. Another solid card for the equipment decks is kind of all, but this has been available before if you needed one, and I think they're like 50 cents. So, eh, it's fine. Stolen by the Fae. X blue, blue. Return target creature with mana value X or less, or actually X to its owner's hand, and then you create X, one, one blue fairy creature tokens with flying. Obviously, if you're playing the fairy deck, cool. This also can just be played in a regular, just blue heavy deck if you wanted to, right? Return a creature, make some fairies. Nothing too surprising about this. It's a playable card, not really worth much, but if it's the type of card you're looking for, eh, it'll be around. Ah, uh, yeah, Starfield Mystic. Colorless and a white for a 2-2. Enchantments cost one less. Whenever an enchantment you control is put into a graveyard from the battlefield, you put a plus one, plus one counter on this card, and it's a human cleric. So, like... If you just want to make our enchantments cheaper, this is the card you're looking for, and it just has a small upside. More fairy action with Sprite Noble, colorless blue blue, flying, other creatures you control with flying get plus O plus one. Other creatures you control with flying get a plus one plus zero when you tap it. Just fine. You don't like tapping your creatures to just pump your other creatures, but you can. And it is a fairy itself, and increasing the toughness could be beneficial. But again, it's a card we've had around... Never really see it played that much. Probably won't now. Sphinx of Enlightenment. Four colorless, blue, blue, five, five. So six mana for a five, five Sphinx. Flying. When it enters, target opponent draws a card and you draw three cards. I guess if I'm playing Sphinxes, I'll play it. Otherwise, eh. Somberwald Beastmaster. I also forgot this was a magic card. 
Six colors and a green for a 1-1 one, one human rogue. When it enters, create a 2-2 two, two wolf, a 3-3 three, three beast, and a 4-4 four, four green beast. Create creature tokens you control have death touch. So for 7 mana, you get a 1-1, one, one, a 2-2, two, two, a 3-3, three, three, and a 4-4, four, four, which is actually kind of good on rate, and they all have death touch except for the 1-1. One, one. But really, not that many people are playing this, unless your plan is just to like keep flickering it and have a pile of things. I don't know why you would want this in your deck. Sarkin, Fireblood, Colorless, Red Red for a 3 loyalty Planeswalker. Plus 1, you can discard a card. If you do draw a card, you can plus 1, add 2 mana of any combination of colors, spend this mana only to cast dragon spells, and then minus 7, create 4 5 5 red dragon creature tokens with fine. So obviously, you want to be playing this in a dragon deck. But it's actually not terrible. When it was standard legal, I did it a little bit, and it's cool, so... If you didn't own this or haven't been able to find any to build your dragon deck, well, okay, here you go. Sangromancer, two colorless, black, black, three, three, vampire shaman with flying. Whenever a creature an opponent controls dies, you gain three life. Whenever an opponent discards the cards, you gain three life. So, yeah, yeah, just fine, usable, nothing too crazy. Probably not going to see a lot of play, but not bad. Sanctum Seeker, two colorless, black, black, three, four. Whenever a vampire you control attacks, each opponent loses a life, you gain a life. This actually does see some play. Now, this card's been around for a minute, and it's not super expensive. I think, again, I think it's a card you can get for 25 to 50 cents in a lot of places. But, eh, you know, it's solid. So if you're playing vampires or knights that have some vampires kind of in the deck, cool. But mostly a vampire deck. But yeah, this is neat. It's just a fine reprint. Psy, Master Thopterus, two colors and a blue for a 1-4 human artificer. Whenever you cast an artifact spell, create a 1-1 one, one colorless thopter token with flying. You can pay a colorless and a blue, sacrifice two artifacts, draw a card. Yeah, another one where, like, it's been around, it's been part of some combo we decks, doesn't see a ton of play, but it's not a bad inclusion. Ruthless Technomancer, three colorless and a black for a human wizard, 2-4. When this enters, you may sacrifice another creature you control. If you do, create a number of treasure tokens equal to that creature's power. Pay two colorless and a black, sacrifice X artifacts, return target creature card from with power X or less from your graveyard to the battlefield, and X can't be zero. Like, this is, I before, when I looked at this card, it's just too complicated. It, it's a lot of work to just reanimate a thing. Like, I don't, yeah, I, I don't know why we needed this card. We're probably not going to play it either. I will say this, though, for the card. If you're already doing a lot of that as far as making treasure and stuff in, like, a commander deck... Great reprint for you. If you don't already plan to do those things, not the best card. Rodolph Duskbringer. Five colorless and a black. Four, four. Vampire Angel. Flying, Death Touch, Lifelink. Whenever you gain life, this gains indestructible to end a turn. At the beginning of your end step, you may pay a black and a Orzob mana. When you do, return target creature card with mana value extra left from your graveyard to the battlefield where X is the amount of life you gain this turn. Ooh, this maybe could get some play in some, like, large battle cruiser commander games. Uh, flying Death Touch Lifelink is a pretty strong set of words. Six mana, but it's on a 4-4 four four that has a lot of upside, which is really cool. And you possibly are getting stuff back from the graveyard, which is neat. So, yeah, there's a lot to like about this card. How much will it be? How many people play it? I have no clue. The cost is really expensive, so maybe not that much. But as a one of. Eh, not a bad inclusion. More elf action with Rickshar, Pima, Renegade, two colors and a green for a 2-2 elf druid. When it enters, put a plus one, plus one counter on each of up to two target creatures. Each creature you control with a counter on it has tap, add a green. Yeah, this card's just solid. We know it's useful. It's played in a variety of decks. It's been reprinted a bunch of times, so it's not an exciting reprint. You could get these for like a quarter anywhere you want, but eh, it's still not bad. Rionya, Fire Dancer, three colorless, red, red for a three, four human wizard. At the beginning of combat on your turn, create X tokens that are copies of another target creature you control where X is one plus the number of instant sorcery spells you've cast this turn. They have haste, exile them to the beginning of the next in step. Yeah, this is just a wild card. Um, yeah, don't know what to think about this one. Is it playable? Yes. How many spots will it turn up? I don't know, but cool card. If you're already doing spell-heavy stuff. Righteous Valkyrie. We already know this is playable if you're doing angels. Two colors and a white. Two, four. Flying. Whenever another angel cleric enters the battlefield, you gain life equal to its toughness. As long as you have seven life more than your starting total, your creatures get plus two, plus two. 
Yeah, just a good card. Rock's Facebender, if you're doing the life gain thing, three colorless and a white, one five, lifelink. If you would gain life, you gain twice that much life. Obviously good if you're doing a lifelink thing, right? Reaper from the Abyss, three colorless, green, 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 six, six, demon. So another demon for your demon deck. It has flying. Morbid at the beginning of each end step. If a creature died this turn, destroy target non-demon creature. It's fine. Cost it right. Good inclusion if you want to play demons or just have a sacrifice deck so you can pick off your opponent's stuff. Just solid. Queen and Beast Caller, apparently they just thought, eh, there's already enough of these around. Why not reprint this again? So, yeah, colorless and a green for a 2-2. Two, two. Whenever you play a creature spell, put a plus one plus one counter on it. When it dies, you can move the counters to another creature. Eh, it's just kind of okay. I mean, we play it in standard. If you're doing the plus one plus one thing, it's fine. doesn't really find a home anywhere else. Not sure you're going to play this in your commander builds because I have a plus one plus one deck, and I don't think it's in there at this time. So, eh, not the most exciting reprint. Priest of the Forgotten Gods, colorless and a black for a 1-2 human cleric, sacrifice two other creatures. Any number of target players each lose two life and sacrifice a creature. You add two mana, two black mana, and draw a card. This got played before. It's been reprinted. There's a plenty available. You can probably get them for under $2 in a lot of places. A useful reprint, just not an exciting one. Fadim, Console of Innovation, three colors and a blue for a 1-4 Vidalcan Artificer, artifacts you control of Hexproof. At the beginning of your upkeep, if you control the artifact with the highest mana value or tied for the highest mana value, you draw a card. Yeah, this just seems, again, not an exciting reprint, just useful. If you're playing an artifact-type deck, this works perfectly for you. Overflowing Insight. Four. Blue, blue, blue. Target player draws seven cards. This is an okay reprint. The only time you're going to see it is when somebody's trying to be degenerate, find a way to play it for free or super discounted or whatever. But, yeah, it's fine. Again, not exciting, just fine. Ornery Foos, want to do some more plus one plus one counters? Two colors and a green for a 2-2. Two, two. When it enters, put a counter on target creature you control. Then when this attacks, put a plus one plus one counter on each attacking creature with a plus one plus one counter on it. So yeah, just keep building your counters every turn this attacks. Kind of force your opponent to block and deal with this. But again, useful, not crazy. Nykthos Paragon, six mana, four six, human soldier. When you gain life, put that many plus one plus one counters on each creature you control. Do this only once each turn. So yeah, if you can get there for six mana, the upside on this is huge, but likely won't see a lot of play because it hasn't until this point. Necropolis Region. Three colors, black, 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 six, five vampire with flying. Whenever a creature you control deals combat damage to a player, put that many plus one plus one counters on it. Like once upon a time, this was kind of a hot card and it's gotten reprinted more, so it's more plentiful and easy for people to get. And you're seeing less and less of it. So yeah, it's a powerful card, but I guess the situation just rarely comes up to where people quit playing with it after a while. Nabon, Dean of Iteration, colors and a blue for a 2-1 human wizard. If a wizard you control entering causes a triggered ability of a permanent you control to trigger, it triggers an additional time. I don't know how many builds have wizards that are doing that, so I'm going to say it's not that exciting and not that useful. Mu Yan Ling, Sky Dancer. I don't know if this was reprinted outside of maybe Core Set a while ago. Uh, anyway, it's a Planeswalker with two loyalty. You can plus two. Until the end of the next turn, up to one target creature gets minus two and loses flying. You can minus three, create a 4-4 four, four blue elemental bird creature token with flying. You can minus eight. You get an emblem with islands you control, have tap, draw a card. So obviously, huge upside, right? Like, you play this early, it can protect itself, which works out great. Like, let's say you counter their first thing, you play this, you make something else you know, minus two for a couple of turns, and now every island lets you draw a card? That's pretty powerful. So this might turn out to be a thing people play with because I feel like this is one of those cards people ignored because they just didn't have it or hadn't seen it. But now that it's in the forefront, people might start playing with this more. Micaeus the Lunar, X and a white for a 0-0 zero, zero human cleric. It enters with X counters on it. You can tap to put a counter on Micaeus or you can pay one to remove a counter, put a plus one, plus one on each creature you control. Again, a card that's been reprinted a lot. It's actually useful and playable in a lot of things. So, sure, cool reprint, but I'd be surprised this is more than 50 cents. Lotus Cobra, 2 mana, 2-1, two landfall, add a mana of any color. If you're doing the landfall thing, just cool. Mace of the Valiant, it's an equipment. Equip creatures plus one, plus one for each charge counter on it. Whenever a creature you control enters... 
put a plus, put a charge counter on Mace of the Valiant. Honestly, I've literally never seen this actually cast. So, not sure why it needs to be reprinted unless they were just like wanting some safe equipment. But having this in the rare slot is a big downer. Lord of the Unreal, blue blue for a 2 2 human wizard. Illusions you control get plus one plus one and have hex proof. Cool if you want to do the illusion thing. <laughs> yeah, all right. Uh, otherwise, kind of just a 2 2 wizard. Liliana, Death's Majesty, three colorless, black black, five loyalty. Plus one, create a 2 2 zombie, mill two cards, minus three, return target creature card from your graveyard to the battlefield. That creature is a black zombie in addition to its other colors and types. Minus seven, destroy all non zombie creatures. So yeah, this is fine. Again, it's existed for a while. It's not like it has any real value. It's just a really versatile, useful card. Kodama of the Rest Tree with kind of sweet new art. Three mana, three, three, reach. Modified creatures you control have trample. Whenever a modified creature you control does combat damage to your player, search your library for basic land, put it onto the battlefield tapped, then shuffle. Yeah, this is just a solid card. Good reprint. Um, there were some versions of this that got kind of pricey, but I mean... This will be good just to have for some decks. So, yeah, cool reprint, I guess. Hooded Blight Fang. Call us in a black for a snake with Death Touch 1-4. Whenever a creature you control with Death Touch attacks, each opponent loses one, you gain one. Whenever a creature you control with Death Touch deals damage to a Planeswalker, destroy that Planeswalker. Yeah, this is just a solid card. We played with it when it was standard legal before. There's enough things with Death Touch now that you can definitely build stuff at almost, I think you can actually, at every drop with Death Touch if you wanted to do something like that. Now, granted, we're just not going to be standard, but you can play it in a Death Touch heavy deck if you do want to do that. Garrick Beast, or Barrett, Garrick Caller of Beast is getting a reprint. I got to get the right version there. Four colorless, green, green, four loyalty. Plus one, reveal the top five cards of your library. Put all creature cards revealed this way into your hand and the rest on the bottom of your library. Minus three, you may put a green creature card from your hand onto the battlefield. Minus seven, you get an emblem with whenever you cast a creature spell, you may search the library for a creature card, put it onto the battlefield, then shuffle. So yeah, just a good all-around creature-based planeswalker. Hadn't seen it in a minute. They were starting to go up in value a little bit, so kind of a cool little reprint. Felidar Sovereign, four colorless, white, white, four, six, vigilance, lifelink. It's a cat beast. At the beginning of your upkeep, if you have 40 or more life, you win the game. Yeah, these were already around. People were playing them in Commander. Yes, because you start with 40 life. Admittedly, by the time you get to 6 mana, you don't always have 40 life. But, yeah, just a decent card. Not a lot to say about it. They've always been like a dollar or two, so I expect that to be the same. A little bit surprising that Exsanguinate is turning out to be a reprint here. Uh, X black black, each opponent loses X life, you gain life equal to the life lost this way. Yeah, just kind of annoy all your opponents at one time. But yeah, good card. The price has come down after a couple of reprints, so I wouldn't expect this to be more than a dollar if you need one. Dreadhorde Arcanist, colorless in a red for a 1-3, zombie wizard with trample. Whenever it attacks, you can cast target entrance sorcery card with mana value less than or equal to this card's power from your graveyard without paying its mana cost. If the spell would be cast, it's exile. Like, this is actually cool. I... I don't know if it needed a reprint, but it is a good card, and it shows up from time to time, and actually some really competitive decks. Doom the Necromancer. Two colors and a black for a 2-2. Human Cleric Mercenary. You can pay a black and tap it. Sacrifice this card. Return target creature card from your graveyard to the battlefield. It's another reanimator <laughs> type spell, right? Three mana, 2-2. Two, two. Get something back from your graveyard on the cheap. Useful card. If you want redundancy in your commander deck that's trying to do reanimation stuff, this is on obvious include. Bastion of Remembrance getting a reprint, but it's been reprinted a couple times anyway. I think even recently in the Fallout set. Uh, two colors and a black enchantment. When it enters, create a 1-1 one, one white human soldier creature token. Whenever a creature you control dies, each opponent loses a life, you gain a life. Obviously, if you're making lots of tokens or sacrificing lots of things to try to combo out, like this is the card you're looking for, it probably won't be more than 50 cents just because it's been reprinted so much. Averna the Chaos Bloom, uh, green, blue, and red. It's a 4-2 Legendary Elemental Shaman. As you cascade, you may put a land card from among the exiled cards onto the battlefield tapped. This is an interesting thing because some people might start looking at Cascade because of the recent discussions around Storm being in the Marble Secret layer that also has the Storm mechanic. 
So maybe while you're trying to play all these extra spells, maybe some of those things you play have Cascade in the same colors. Maybe. But otherwise, I can't see why people are going to be excited about this card. It's been around for a while right now. It was only in Commander Legends, I think. And don't see a lot of it on the tables as it is. So I was stretching for something, but that might be the only reason it gets any play, I think. Otherwise, didn't really need to be reprinted because I don't think there's a ton of Cascade stuff we've come across so far. Ancient Green Warden. Four colors. Green Green. Five, seven. Elemental with reach. You can play lands from your graveyard. If a land entering the battlefield causes... A triggered ability of a permanent you control to trigger. That ability triggers an additional time. Obviously, this is your upper end type card for a landfall deck. And surprisingly, lots of versions of this card are in the like $9, 10 range and, and up. So kind of a needed reprint for some people. So this might get cheaper, probably down to the $3 range, $4 range that people can pick this up. So not a bad reprint. A Johnny, Adversary of Tyrants, two colorless, red, red, or why did I say red? Two colors, white, white, for four loyalty planeswalker. Plus one, put a plus one, plus one counter on each of up to two target creatures. Minus two, return target creature card with mana value two or less from your graveyard to the battlefield. Minus seven, you get an emblem that at the beginning of your instep create three one one white cat creature tokens with lifelink. So yeah, just a good general all around planeswalker to have reprinted. Again, if you're already playing cats and stuff out of this uh, jumpstart, you probably want to play this. And I don't think this has been reprinted since Corset 2020, maybe? So it's been a while since we've seen this card. And be a welcome reprint for people. All right, that's it for today. There are a lot of cards. I skipped a few because there were so many reprints that weren't exciting because some of the cards have already been reprinted a lot in recent stuff. I didn't think we really needed to keep talking about those. But overall, lots of exciting cards. Let me know what your favorite is or what you're looking forward to building with, especially with the standard legal stuff, because this is kind of crazy the cards we're going to have available to build with like standards about to be wild but yeah check out the stuff from yesterday if you hadn't seen it because there was even more cards we talked about in that one but that's all of you for now we'll see you next time